Hi, I'm Jim. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I've been noticing occasionally when I do a pre-flight, there's a, just a teeny bit of coolant on the lower cowl and heck, I'm having a hard time figuring out where it's coming from, but you know, it's not something you want to ignore. So I looked and looked and couldn't really find it. So I decided the thing to do was to get a, a radiator test kit so I could pressurize the coolant system and uh, you know, with, with the engine off and the system pressurized, I should be able to see where the leak came from. So I bought a big radiator test kit, figuring you know, with all these adapters here, one of them was bound to fit, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> None of them fit. Uh, so I ended up making my own uh, out of some aluminum bar stock and a scrap of steel and spring from McMaster car and um, that that works for pressurizing the system but even then I was having trouble finding it. Uh, what I ended up doing was I put this on, pumped it up to 15 pounds per square inch, left it overnight and then came back the next day you know with the lower cowling off, the exhaust system off and I was finally able to confirm that it was coming out the weep hole for the water pump. Uh, you know, it was, maybe one drop every hour, every half hour, I don't know. You know so it's hard to see, it was such a small leak. But uh, at this point, um, it's time to get the water pump out. Well, the water pump is down here inside the ignition housing, or the rear cover on this engine. I considered trying to do it in place, but uh, with my old knees and my old back, trying to work in that space. I think I'm going to pull the engine and uh, make it easy. So that's the plan. Engine comes off, then we'll take a look at the uh, back of the engine and see where we go from there. S step one is just labeling all of the uh, wires and where they go. Oil temperature, cylinder number two temperature, oil pressure on the other side so that when I put it back together, I don't have to trace wires and guess where they came from. And of course, I disconnected the negative battery terminal so that in case my wrench bumped between anything like the engine or the mounts and wires, you don't get the big sparky sparky. At this point, I removed all the wires that had been zip tied to the engine mounts and stuff. Uh, when I put it back together, I used Adele clamps instead of zip ties, just because it's better practice. Removed the connections from the oil pump also. Some of the wires that went into the voltage regulator stay with the airframe, but the wires from the charging coils in the ignition system need to get removed, so I pulled those two out of the connector. Uh, one of these days I'm going to have to buy some of those tools for pulling pins, but uh, what I did here is I just used the tweezers from my Swiss Army knife. I'm on the last nut here. I took a little strain on the hoist. She should be loose. It is free. I'm going to set it on the table. I'll set it. Yeah. Okay, I think I uh, want to get the oil cooler out of the way. And that will let it sit on the table better. Uh, just take it right off.
Okay, I don't know what did or didn't get recorded, but uh, there it is. It's sitting on the bench. It rocks a little bit. Flywheel's got to come off. Then this whole housing comes off, and the water pump is back here. So I got to get these hoses undone. <sighs> Fun never ends. I'll end this video here. Next up, we'll be taking the flywheel off and removing the ignition housing and getting things ready to ship out to Leading Edge Airfoils. So thanks for watching. I hope you found it at least entertaining, and I'll catch you on the flip side.